from the UK, um, Silver and Sidil on the late one. And I want to wish you a wonderful day. And even if it's a morning or it's an afternoon, wherever you are in the world, because I try to reach to a wide cross section of persons. You see, sometimes you've got to go as though you want to grow. You know, so I look at it from that perspective. Um, well, as you know, um, we, we are in this crisis. At this time, we're in this crisis whereby there's this pandemic, there's this lockdown, and in a situation whereby uh, many things are happening. But one of the things that I try to do, I try to use my program as much as possible to add value. And that is to add value to people's lives, add values with um, different perspective, different guests. I'll give my view as well, but I'm no professional. I'm no medical expert. And um, so as of, as of today and, uh, and tonight, I'll be having again um, my guest, um, Dr. David Burton. Um, he's a Mr. Burton, a GMC registered consultant, ophthalmic surgeon, working in NHS. And also I'm joined with his wife as well. Um, Dr. Carla Campbell Burton, an epidemiologist who currently works for a pharmaceutical consulting firm. She's going to come on and, and they will be looking at the recent update from the, the minister, um, looking at tracking, tracing, testing, or different the, the way how that is set out. And also look on PPE and also um, touch base a bit on the mental health. That's something I want to touch on, the mental health factors as well. So that is what we, we're going we're gonna to talk about. And of course, persons, um, you can also um, feel free to ask any questions and they will answer it as well. And uh, we, we just go with it. Uh, so without further ado, I will um, bring in Mr. But before I do it, before I do that, before I do that, let me just play something from the minister. I find this very interesting. If you can listen I set a goal that anyone at the beginning of last month at this podium, I set a goal that anyone who needs a test should get a test. And that as a nation, we should achieve 100,000 tests per day by the end of the month. I knew that it was an audacious goal, but we needed an audacious goal because testing is so important for getting Britain back on our feet. I can announce that we have met our goal the number of tests yesterday, on the last day of April, was 122,347. This unprecedented expansion in British testing capability is an incredible achievement. But it is not my achievement. It is a national achievement, mm -hmm. achieved by a huge team of people working together. And I'll tell you this, the testing capacity that we've built together will help every single person in this country. Testing is crucial to suppress the virus. I know from personal experience too, just how much people with symptoms want to know if they've got the disease. I know that I did. It helps remove the worry. It helps keep people safe and it will help us to unlock the lockdown. So many people have tragically died. And the challenge that we still face is vast, but we're making real progress. Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, that was Matt Hancock, who is the health secretary, and gave the, the recent update today at the number 10 Downing Street. Now, without further ado, I'm going to bring in Dr. David Burton and Dr. Carla Burton as well to um, give us an update as to the latest. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies Good evening. and gentlemen, Good evening. gentlemen and ladies, <laughs> <laughs> how, you how are you guys? We're good. We're good. We're you know, trying to keep safe. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Well, enjoying our sort of hour out every day. Yes, and yes. Trying to keep mentally and physically health healthy. Yes. How about yourself? How are you doing this evening? Well, you know what can I say? I, I just um, I don't go with the flow. If I say I go with the flow, someone remind me and say you got a program that says don't go with the flow. You know, I don't go with the <laughs> flow. You know. I was saying to my boss today, listen, I need to drive, but I just need to drive to Kent. Can I was going to the office? And then she said to me today, Silver, actually, you're a key worker. We got a letter for you. You're a key worker. So I said, oh, cool. So I said, when the NHS people are clapping and everybody's clapping for NHS, can I just walk in the middle of the road and say, thank you, thank you, thank you? <laughs> <laughs> you can ask for that test at the same time. And I, I can ask for the test. You know? 
Yeah, but 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 yeah. I think I've had my running with COVID already, and I knock it to the ground with some orange juice. You know, what I mean, about five six weeks ago, uh, another mate <laughs> of mine said, another mate of mine said, uh, "Silver, listen, man, I think I had it about three times already." You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know, but listen, listen, guys, um, David, uh, the latest today with Doctor, um, sorry, with Doc, with Matt Hunk, I'm calling him a doctor. All these guys are speaking like they are doctors. You, you've, you've got you got the who guy who is who is not even a doctor. You got Bill Gates. <laughs> He's not a doctor. All these guys are <laughs> operating like doctors. You know what I'm saying? It's confusing. You know? Yeah. So we yeah. need a refund on our education. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we need a refund. refund on our education. Yes, yes. So tell me, what's it, what's the latest then? Um, um, well, you, I mean, you, you had the prelude there of um, Matt Hancock sort of um, giving us a, an update as to how many tests, um, uh, I think capacity really, he's, he's suggested, um, uh, and, and that have been undertaken. We kind of compiled those up to get to this figure of 120,000. Yeah. Um, but when you get to the uh, crux of it, uh, some of these tests uh, are test kits that have been distributed um, by the by a, by a mail or, or such. So they haven't actually been tested. But yeah. I think that's somewhat a, a, a new point because there are, in my, my feelings are there are more pressing matters. Yeah. And that really boils down to a couple of things in regards to the, um, the, the way and ability that we're going to go and test people, trace and, and, and tackle that issue. Because um, I think now we've got the R number down and the R number really is about how effective this particular condition is in terms of spreading the disease. Um, I think the next step really the government has already outlined is that we need to try and target and trace and track mm. the, 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 the virus itself. So um, in terms of that, the, this week we know that there, there well, over the past week we've known that there are going to be around 18,000 persons trying to do facilitate that particular program. But what we learned um, in recent hours is that that program I don't think will be up and effective to, to, to what we would desire until mid-May, um, yes. which is a little bit disappointing from my point of view because you know, we're now in a position where we, we really need to tackle this um, to get uh, ourselves sort of working as a, as a, as a, as a population and to, yes. to, to where we were previously so um, it's a little bit disappointing to hear that and um, it was it was you know it was real um real good energy when we heard that eighteen thousand people were going to task this project but now we're hearing that it may well be a few weeks yet to the making before that really is is, is a maximum capacity so um yeah testing tracing tracking is is the key thing now and, yes. and, and 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 that will help to keep and suppress the numbers so so that um, this this horrible disease is, is 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 sort of yeah it has less an effect on persons yes that's where we're going really in regards to sort of government advice okay. the other thing is yeah um in regards to sort of pbe i know we've we've kind of not lost focus but it's always been in the background there um, and there was a question in relation to whether persons in the public could um wear wear PPE, personal protective equipment and masks um, and that's another interesting kind of um, development um, yeah. because you're you're getting a split in the union. You're getting mixed messages, and obviously with that you get a bit of confusion. Uh, yeah. And so in Scotland, we're hearing that there's an advice. Uh, it's been commented that some sort of face covering is, is is the way forward. But then that's contrasted with um, with what we're hearing in in, in England. Um, yeah. I, I, I want us to just rewind back and just yeah, leave sure. the face, leave the mask for a bit. Um, let's go back to the bit about testing mm -hmm. and just for the benefit, um, the government has said that there's going to be a target of 100,000 daily tests and 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 what we're, what you understand and what he's actually saying, it has been met. But so, there are questions signed around how the figures add up. It's just like the correct, employment, employment correct. figure, isn't it? Correct. So essentially what you've got is around 120,000, just, just for simple maths here, 120,000 yeah. uh, uh, is what has been quoted. But yes. in terms of how that figure has come to fruition, um, what what one person, what persons would understand by that is that people have been tested. So people have had the test results back, or at least have had that that that, that sample tested. What we're saying, in essence, is yes. around about thirty to forty thousand of these tests are are tests that are out in the um, in the in the ether, but have not been tested. They're sat in 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 people's on people's desks, awaiting test. Um, they're sat in 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 in, in uh, sort of facilities to send it back to the test for, uh, test centres, yes. and so they actually haven't officially been tested. If that makes mm -hmm. sense. So you know, to 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 put another spin on this, you could say if I 
one is the target of 100,000 and I just sent 100,000 tests into the community, I could say that I've met my test target when in essence, I haven't really met the test target. Um, yeah. But again, I'm going back to the fact that it's, it's somewhat a mute point because there are other things that I think are of pressing nature in terms of the testing, the tracking and the tracing, but also an emphasis on how we're going to utilize that information in, in mm -hmm. the near future. So, you know, how is it that we're going to get people back to doing the things that they do with that, with that in mind? Right. Because um, Labour says the figures are misleading, mm. you know, and um, and and also that that is one of the factors there. So let's let's go on, let's go into the tracking now. So you, you got the tracing. I just want to break it down for personal benefit. So we got the the the, 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 the testing. The testing. You got the testing. So, so what you're doing the tracking now, yeah. Right. So what you're trying to do is utilize um, persons to to get to individuals who have tested positive for the disease and yes. track those individuals down. Now, there are a myriad of ways of trying to, 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 to utilize that. There are persons who will be able to, to do that personal tracking. Um, yes. And there's been a discussing discussion about um, util utilizing technology that we already have. So on mobile phones, for example, to yes. try and um, get to an idea as to who in the community has been infected um, so that you can track these individuals and alert people as to whether or not somebody that you've come into contact with has had the condition itself. So, yes. and that's in an anonymous fashion. I don't think it's going to come up with, uh, mm. you know, Mr. Silbon Sedal has had this condition, you know, please stay away from that person. It's, it's more that in this general vicinity, you may all want to stay away from this particular area. Yeah. I would assume that that would be the way that it would go for because there's got to be a degree of anonymity to to, to all of this. Or how it's worked in um, other places where it's already in use. Um, China, for example, um, they have barcodes that they would use. And so if you may have been on a bus with somebody who, was tested positive and your barcode um, uh, signals that you were on that bus as well, and it would notify you that you would have been potentially exposed to the disease. Right. So therefore, what, what is happening is uh, by everybody being traced or so, they can put it together like some crime figures or something like that, like a DNA thing, isn't it? Yeah, I'm trying to, just yeah. To, to, a name to sort of um, confine the area that has been affected. But um, as we've alluded to, it's to try and make sure that if you have come into contact with somebody, you're alerted to that. And I guess you would then spend a little bit more time and attention to the symptoms that you have and, and so on and so forth. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for coming on um, to the late one on Facebook with Silburn and uh, my guest, uh, Mr. David Burton, um, consultant, ophthalmic surgeon, and uh, with his wife, Dr. Carla Campbell Burton. Uh, those on Instagram, you can go over to Facebook or you can, you can listen as, as well and you can pick up on those on youtube for coming on later as well um so therefore we we so that we, we got the testing we got the tracking and and the, i guess you have covered the yeah, well, yeah that's, the that's essentially it really that's the breakdown yeah. of it all um, that's, that's and, and that's just remember this is just to try and reduce those numbers even further suppress the curve even further and and, and reduce the impact that this has on us going forward um yeah. uh, and, and that's essentially how, we, how we're going to work this yeah I'm um, um, Carla, you know, there's one thing about um, masks, for argument's sake. Um, PPE is the big word, but it's more talking about the, the medical fraternity and those on the front line, isn't it? Yeah. Um, general, well, generally, that's where you would want to prioritize the use of masks uh, because the, the exposure is often more intense uh, and protracted over time. Whereas um, if you're in the general public, uh, depending on the space that you're using, if it's just going out for a walk, you may not be coming into contact with that many people. However, if you are traveling on the tube in London and your journey is 45 minutes and you've got everyone you know, cramped into a, a closed yes. tube area, it may make, practically, it may make a little bit of sense to um, have at least some form of barrier if you're in close contact with people for an extended period of time. But I think mm. In terms of having the evidence, there's it's not certain. Wow. So 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 I think this is a bit now with the mass because just like uh, David alluded to earlier, um, in in Scotland it is looking more like on a mandatory level. Jamaica, for argument's sake, it's mandatory for people to have masks. Um, but I think in the UK, what they're talking about is well, I mean Scotland's a part of the UK, isn't it? Um, they're trying to somewhat don't take the, the pressure or don't take away some of the, the mask or the PPE from the frontline staff. And it is it's like a balancing act. Is, is it that what, what's going on there? Why the UK is not coming out very strong on that? 
Well, I mean, it can be an issue of supply. And I think you probably could talk to that a bit better because you work uh, directly within the healthcare system. So we wouldn't want to be taking away supply from healthcare uh, workers or key workers who are essential, who do have, you know, maybe a lot more exposure than the general public. Um, mm. So that could be a reason around that. And, but I think maybe the approach that the UK government may take may not be that it is mandatory, but they may look to recommend or it may be advisory. So that puts a little bit of um, responsibility on individuals to, to assess that for themselves, whether or not they feel it's necessary. So there's a difference between saying we're going to mandate carte blanche, everyone needs to wear a mask versus we advise you to wear a mask. And we don't know, you know sort of what the final decision is. Um, I think it's kind of a watch the space and see. But in terms of having evidence to support uh, wearing masks in the general public, there is lots of uncertainty around that. And that's probably why we've not seen them, uh, seen the government officially come out or the UK government officially come out and say, we recommend wearing masks. Um, but then also there, there's the issue of managing the supply for the NHS. Yes, yes, yes. And, and, and David, um, one of the other thing also is that we, we touched on the recent um, Use, utilization of vaccines which the UK has developed. Um, there's, a, there's, there's somewhat of a lull, a silence on how that is happening. Well, I mean, the, the, that's it's going to take time. That's the problem mm -hmm. with, with with vaccinations. Um, it's going to take a while for these things to develop. Um, we're currently still under sort of a, a, a test system whereby we're looking to see whether there's a safety aspect to the see what the safety aspect of the the, the, the vaccine is. And also the effectivity, and that's going to take a time, take, take a while, symbol, and that's 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 you know, something that will continue to to be in the background. And it's, it's right for us to, to ask the question where we are with with vaccines, but this isn't going to be in the next month. This isn't going to be in the next sort of few few months. Um, I, I, you know, I, I can't personally, whilst I'm uh, I'm not a virologist um, and I don't have um, uh, background in, in in vaccinations, I can yeah. go from historic. Sort of vaccinations that are out there and they take a, a long while to, to develop um yeah. going back to the point with regards to masks um i think there's got to be um again uh, just to emphasize there's got to be a degree of um common sense to this and yeah. if you are out in a, in a in an environment where you feel that you are uh, going to be exposed and some sort of face covering um i, I think is a sensible a sensible approach to, to sort of Giving, giving, protecting others really from 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 yeah. from, 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 from yourself, um, but it's not going to give you um, very much protection from 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 collecting uh, or, or actually getting the virus itself. But face covering, I think, is, is something that is simply simply achieved. And maybe just to go back to the vaccine, um, yeah. I do think uh, developing vaccines typically can take a lot of time. Um, even the SARS uh, disease that's, you know, been around for over 15 years, there's still no vaccine for that. That's also a coronavirus, yeah. by the way. Um, so typically, the, the time it would generally take to develop a vaccine is, you know, on the magnitude of, you know, even 10 years normally. Yeah. We're in a slightly different or a very different situation this time around in that we have a lot of collaboration amongst industry, between industry and academia, between industry, academia and the government. So, I mean, uh, when people work collectively together, you would hope that, it will push the evidence um, along at a, a scale that, you know, that wouldn't normally see. But um, I do think, you know, one year is very optimistic. Um, and then one of the things with developing vaccines as well is that in, in addition to knowing whether it works, you have to also know it, if it's safe and if it's yes. safe over the long term. And that's just a function of time. And, and, and also talking about vaccine and just what you just said a while ago, interesting what you said. You said something that the SARS is a vaccine for SARS. Yes, there is no vaccine for SARS. Um, I mean, this is we are in uncharted territory. Yes. Uh, SARS was a <clears throat> had a large outbreak in China. Um, China, before, again. China. <laughs> uh, it came China. over to Toronto. Hey, <laughs> what's that, that Trump? China. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to catch me on <laughs> saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Just don't mention uh, 5G now. So okay. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> oh my days. It's going to be shut down. <laughs> um, it, <laughs> where were we? Wait a sec. It did come, it did um, affect Canada um, at the time. So I remember being in Toronto. Um, and so it didn't probably have the same effect that it did, although it did have a higher mortality rate, but globally um, it didn't impact the same number of people. So, um, you know, if it's not, if it's sometimes we're in a state where if it's not my problem, then it's not my problem. I, I'm not going to mm -hmm. care. But this 
you know, coronavirus is much different in that, you know, globally, we're all impacted by this. So I think there will be a lot more um, sort of effort around collaboration and just funding in general as well. I think the only other thing I would just add there is, um, obviously, we, we talked about two components of this. This is the vaccination that gives you a, a degree of immunity going forward, so protects you from um, getting COVID later on down the line. But the the, the other thing to mention here, Silvone, is there's, there are active um, um, efforts to try and get treatments for the condition. Um, yeah. And and you may well have heard in the press um, some information regarding that, um, so some conflict information regarding some of the treatments that are out there at the moment. So that, that's a two pronged attack, the vaccination for long term. And in terms of now, we're trying to get some treatments. And those are ongoing studies that are, are taking place. Um, so yeah. And, but we, we would, there's a disclaimer, bleach is not a treatment. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely mean, not. Do not ingest any bleach, please. Yeah. But, but, but on the television the other night, there's a church which is selling some ointment or something, 70 pounds. I don't know if you saw it. And um, they say, you hit it and it's gone, man. And uh, they're, they're questioning that church. It's in South London. Yeah. So, is, is it... Is it now, now let's break it down now. In the Caribbean and in countries where you have lots of natural things, and people are saying, listen, I use this natural stuff, and it's sorted out. Are they discouraged from saying that they use this and this is their experience? I, I think you're, you're, you're venturing into... Um, uh, Heretic, to, sorry. To, yeah, well, you're venturing into um, an area whereby, unless, in my humble opinion, unless you are fact proven and this is something that's going to be helpful for people across the board yeah. then it's very worrisome that you've got people who would say that i've got a particular treatment for a disease course which is unproven yeah. and that's the issue here because that board is on um kind of exploitation and i, I would have serious uh, concerns with that particularly yes. and uh, no so um i think you have to think of the flip side which is if if these treatments worked why they weren't used in the wider population um, mm -hmm. Um, because it would save a lot of the heartache and aggro that's going on, both from uh, a loss of life point of view, but also from an economic point of view as well. So um, I, I think we do right to question um, mm -hmm. question the science behind these things yes. um, and hold them, hold them to account, because that's what um, I would expect people to do to hold me to account in the job that I do on a daily yeah. basis. So. Yeah. And 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 um, one more bit before I touch on to, I want to touch on something on mental health and for David to say anything more. There's been some news saying that children, there's like a new strain of um, uh, disease or so is happening to children. What, what's your what's that? It, it's oh, been okay. so there, there, yeah. There are there are two different two different things here. So um, there was a discussion about uh, how effective children are. So again, conflicting information. And and the thing again to boil this boils down to is this is still quite a new disease. Yes. You know? Um, and so we're always collecting information and as historically as clinicians we like to have as much information as before embarking on um, sort of giving giving advice okay mm -hmm. but we can only work from the information that's out there at the moment so there's a bit of confliction between the two um, and that's as much as I'll say literally on they say the opposite things, yeah literally but... the opposite so it's 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 <laughs> difficult to comment on that further until more information comes out um, and that's easy for and you can say that's easy for me to hide behind a screen in that regard but quite obviously when you're making decisions about the impact of health, you want to make sure you've got the right information to hand. Now, yeah. in terms of the second, the, 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 the strain that you talked about, there was a, a small group, very small group of, of, of children who um, came out with a particular condition called Kawasaki's disease. And um, it may well have been thought that this was linked to um, the, the, the COVID virus itself. But again, this is a small group. Um, yeah. it's quite children, yeah, I believe. Very isolated. Um, and so again, we're learning more about this COVID problem. We're learning more about how it affects people. And um, yes. we know that um, in terms of the pattern and progression as to how things have gone thus far, children are very unlikely to be affected um, by it uh, in, the, in the, long, uh, the long form. Um, and what I mean by that is ultimately, unfortunately, passing away. It seems to affect people who are much older, 60 plus, um, uh, in increasing magnitude. So I think, um, you know, we will learn more about this. Fortunately, kids seem not to be affected as much, um, but, but that's a de developing situation. Um, yeah. And obviously, as time passes, we'll, we'll get more information.
Right. And any other last point regarding um any up any key update, um, David, before I really move over into mental health, which of course you would join with your wife as well. Yeah, I think I think um so testing we talked about. I think the yeah. the, the only other thing that Matt Hancock talked about today was fertility, which um um obviously is a is a is 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 a big factor in in the in in, in people's lives and such but i, 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 need, that, I need to stop you there because that just he just it just came it. out of nowhere yeah. it just dropped it in like a microphone drop it just yeah and like then left it a, a mic drop yeah yeah mic drop and then left it um uh. so uh, without being too critical because it's easy to be critical at this moment yeah. in time i think there are other pressing um health concerns and everybody feels that their concern is is, is, is needs to be heard the most but um i think in terms of prioritization um, there may well be uh, a reflection on sort of cancer therapy, community therapy, community health, um, and, and obviously mental health, which we'll touch on very shortly. Um, so it was a, it was an interesting um, sort of uh, feeder into the broader discussion of everything else that passed today. Um, and I think that in terms of prioritisation, maybe fertility comes a bit further down the list. Yes. But everybody's, uh, I, you know, I can't speak for for most individuals, but that's that's just my flavour. On, on the matter but but it, it's interesting though that um everything else has an impact and life still goes on with other um areas of um health mm. in, in the system yeah, uh, it goes on but it doesn't go on because obviously the other thing here is that the impact of covid itself is having an indirect effect so that people who are not attending the hospital um for other yeah. ailments and that, that's having a big 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 impact and so that's why I feel those sort of things really should be higher up the list. We should be trying to look right. at how we get people who now are worried about coming to the hospital or have a pending diagnosis of cancer, for example, how we get those persons known again, how we get them back into the system and how we get them uh, I mean, sort of tasked. I mean, we already know that AEs are reporting being, you know, about 50% less busy than they usually are. Um, where are the people with heart attacks and strokes going? What's happening to those people? I don't think you know people have stopped having heart attacks or strokes um, they just may be having them in their homes um, you know cancer treatments people who need to be diagnosed with cancer um, the earlier you can be diagnosed for example uh, the more likely you know, more likely you are to be successful with your treatment and have a better chance of survival mm -hmm. um, and so uh, fertility is obviously very important to people especially if you, you don't have a child um, I suppose there's the you know what about us <laughs> the people who are currently yeah. living through this um, you know, they would probably be thinking, you know, we've, you made this sacrifice. Um, when, when are our needs going to be addressed? Um, you know, mental health is, you know, another big one that's, you know, they're brewing under the surface as well. So um, it was surprising that that's what they've chosen to lead with. And I'd, I'd be interested to, to understand how they arrived at that being sort of where they wanted to, um, you know, be the first thing that they prioritized. It, it, it is interesting because I was just thinking now, I think the 19, Nightingale, that new hospital which has been yeah. built, and I think one is built somewhere in 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 the There's Midlands. Several. There's several. Yeah. So Birmingham, Manchester. Should, should, uh, shouldn't there be a, shouldn't there be a, a, a safe haven? Because for persons who are having these sickness and these ailments which need to be done, because everybody's worried about COVID nineteen. It's it's like it's like many companies now getting ready to go back after. Um, Matt Hancock used the word unlock the lockdown. That's he used that word unlock the lockdown. That's exactly what the <laughs> phrase. Unlock the lockdown. Shouldn't there if be? In the US, they say uh, house huh? arrest. <laughs> if you were in the US, it would be house arrest. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Shouldn't there be some safe haven, like one of those places, be like a safe haven for persons to go in? Well, listen. The the, the pros and the, the pros and cons to to how you utilize the, the, the those. Um, those modalities and so um, in, in essence what we know is that the government wanted those places or at least Excel I can speak on to be places that would be for people who were um, really at wit's end right at the end towards of, of, of their care so people who had th tubes passed through the throat which is intubation so who yeah. were really acutely unwell uh, and needed further help and um, it wasn't really just for the proviso of just anybody that had uh, the COVID virus so um, that's the that's the broad stay of how the government looked at looked all of this, and that's the, that's what they thought they would utilise them for. Whether or not you use it as a safe haven, um, it's a difficult choice to make. Um, it depends on how things go down the track. 
I think that the government, um, and this is my thought on it, the, the government will probably keep these places in existence for a prolonged period of time in any case, just mm -hmm. in case there is um, a further need for them in the future. I can't see them closing, all of them closing at least, um, for, for a little while, um, because we don't know whether there'll be a second peak or not. So mm -hmm. that's just the way I think that things will go. That's yeah. Now, okay, so moving on to the second segment now, um, about a few. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for coming on. And uh, if you're on, please uh, share and like and uh, don't dislike, because if you do, there's ways um, we can find you. We can track and trace, you know what I mean? <laughs> track and trace, you know? um, I, I'm with Dr. Um, Carla Burton um, and her husband, Mr. David Burton, both medical um, doctors. Um, at the same no, time, I'm not medical. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, Carla <laughs> is epidemiologist. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Clarify that point there. Uh, don't <laughs> get sued. Uh, and I'm a lawyer. I, I'm a, church, a family lawyer, but I can somewhat um, switch. Yes, yes. But then I'm going to get sued as well because I switch. <laughs> We're getting busted, man. You know, uh, we need 5G. Oh, shucks, I shouldn't have gonna go. But listen, at the same time, while this is happening, there's another undercurrent which is going on regarding mental health. And uh, the news is talking about the uh, increase of mental health, domestic violence, people are living together too close. And I, I, I've heard the other day, and I'm watching this little video where this guy was with his neighbor and he said, Man, I'm with my children. I don't know them. I don't know there. And the other neighbor said, I told you that big head one. I told you about him. I don't know him. Who are they? You know, because he's never <laughs> at home, you know. So people are actually at home now and don't know each other in a way. But Carla, uh, please, can you shed some light on this whole mental issue and impact with COVID-19? Um, I mean, I think it's, it's multifactorial. Yeah. Um, so if we start with isolation, for example, I think by nature, we are social beings so to say to people you can't uh, socialize for an extended period of time it's sort of cutting off something that's you know very natural for you know for human beings whether you're introvert or extrovert there's likely to be some sort of social interaction that you have benefited from and probably taken for granted um over large periods of time um you know this is unprecedented <clears throat> um and you know generally if you expect you know some people would allude to this uh, pandemic situation even if they've not necessarily suffered from COVID themselves but it is quite a traumatic experience and yeah. generally if you're experiencing a trauma um, under normal circumstances probably everyone in your social circle isn't necessarily experiencing that same trauma at the same time that you are this is something very different we really are all in this together we are all experiencing this same trauma so sort of general um sort of think social supports that you could have potentially taken for granted aren't necessarily going to be there for you at the you know to the extent that you would you know expect them to be because all of us are traumatized to some degree so yes. there's the you know the limitations in terms of social interactions um i think social isolation can lead to feelings of loneliness um just feelings of just general negativity um anxiety and depression can start to um you know become quite you know rife um, uh, feelings of you know it depends on sort of how you know how long this you know goes on for um, people can engage in other risky behaviors such as um, drinking too much alcohol smoking drug use um, and you know if you take it to like you know, as as bad as it could get even potentially taking their own life so there are lots of um, implications around just the pandemic management the focus has been on you know containing the disease and getting the, the reproduction number down, which, you know, that's a great thing to do. Um, but there are also consequences to that, that don't think have um, sort of factored into the decision making that much um, so far. But, you know, hopefully, you know, these consequences will become um, <clears throat> you know, more prevalent, more, uh, they'll become, you know, focused on a little bit more as we go forward. I, I, I've been thinking uh, um, like uh, mental health and the stigma which is attached to mental health and mental health there's no stigma with the word mental health even though there's, sorry there's nothing wrong with the word mental health but the fact that it's mental person's thinking that there's a taboo to it because we all have this mental well-being that needs to be taken care of isn't it yeah so mental health we everyone has mental health that's your yeah. well-being so we all want to have mental health mental uh, good mental health it's the problem uh, 
it arises is when that mental health becomes disordered. So you start to have, you know, feelings of anxiety that you can't control or feelings of depression that you, you, you just can't shake. That's when there is a problem. And I think you alluded to stigma at the start. There is, you know, historically been stigma, you know, particularly even more so probably within the black communities that we don't generally or I, I don't want to say, you know, stereotypically we don't talk about mental health, but you know, there are historical um <clears throat> you know things that say you know we just get on with things you don't really have we've not had the liberty to yeah. or the um you know we've not been able to necessarily think about our mental health um all the time because there were just other things that probably took precedence over mental health so there can be even stigma around admitting that you you know maybe you're not so well today <laughs> and yeah. just you know having that confidence to say that you know it's not always there well someone just said a while ago a uh, zion beloved uh, question but when does violence come? Is there a trigger? I don't know if there's that link there. There's some sort of triggers that is creating these new wave of domestic violence. I'm not saying that is an area you can um, speak into, but I don't know if you have any thoughts. I, I think um, I like to speak on this. So I think if you if you think about the capacity of how people handle certain certain things, there is a there's always <coughs> going to be that tipping point um, that, that 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 people generally cut, tip them over to the to doing something that they may well not have done otherwise and, yeah. and that's obviously we have to speak to persons to people specifically in that regard it's not a not a generalized thing here yeah. um but but that's that, that's definitely um going to be affected by events that have been undertaken whether that be covid causing oh. the the loss of life of somebody that's close to you or mm. that be admitted to hospital themselves or whether the close enclosure of people who you wouldn't normally see so so frequently because you're out in, in work. Um, yeah. So there are lots of different tipping points for people, and that's very person specific. Um, but you know, being in close quarters with with people, being told um, that you have to sort of stay within particular uh, areas um, can obviously affect people disproportionately. Um, yes. And 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 but to the to the to 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 the point that they will unfortunately do things that they wouldn't normally have have done previously. Um, but that's not everybody. Quite obviously, everybody has a little bit of a different tipping point. So so I, I guess the key thing is some may cope better than some. Yeah, some it's, it's about developing those coping strategies yeah. as well, whatever that may well be, and we'll touch on that in a, in a little while, I'm sure. But that's the key. It's it's recognizing that there's an issue at hand having the insight that you you understand that something's not quite right and yeah. that you want to try and improve that in some regard mm -hmm. and obviously the first step would be to try not to get to that point um, and there are th certain things you can do to try and uh, to do that yeah. but once you recognize there is a particular issue it's trying to cope with that uh, and, and finding the best strategy to approach that so carla then what would you say like i i, I was going to come to this and people are actually getting into it already, coping tips. Some people, uh, Alona Foster says, some people have better coping mechanisms than others, so the triggers would be less. And what would you say are some key coping tips uh, at this time to reduce the level of anxiety, depression, or when we see this building up or whatever? Yeah, yeah I think as David mentioned, it's also going to be very person specific. It depends on sort of the level of severity of how much you are suffering, but um, yeah. Just um, maybe to start, if you, there's some simple things that you can do to manage your levels of stress during this or mental health issues yes. you may be having during this pandemic. Um, one of the things that you know lots of people would recommend is to have a routine. Um, our lives have changed fundamentally, you know, from six weeks ago. Yes. And just even having, you know, getting up at the same time, changing your clothes, not staying in your pajamas all day, <laughs> um, you know, setting times when you will have your lunch and when you will, you know, call your friends and family. Um, so, you know, having a routine is one good thing to start with. Um, staying active, uh, physical exercise has been shown to um, have, you know, releases endorphins. I just stood up and showed that I wasn't wearing that. Well, so you're smiling as well. See, it works. <laughs> I'll, I'll get up too. <laughs> um, yeah, so physical exercise, um, is, you know, there's established research around, you know, walking, running, yoga, um, you know, anything that you can do to keep yourself active. Um, if you're able to get do that outdoors, that's even better. 
um, diet is important. So, I mean, I know the first few weeks of the pandemic when I was home every day, I was eating everything. <laughs> um, and, you know, everything I was eating wasn't necessarily healthy. So if you can, you know, fruits and vegetables, drinking lots of water, um, you know, lean meats, just trying to, you know, uh, reduce your intake of processed foods and looking to eat more healthily, that's going to be very helpful. Um, yeah. There are my what about cake? I like, I like I get a cake every two weeks. So is that a coping mechanism? I'm, I'm fighting with the family to keep the cake. And, and did you say every two minutes? <laughs> <laughs> every two weeks or so, I, I get a cake, a lady baked cake, and always going to get it. I got mine today, and I, I might, I might put it on video actually later before I break it. That's my coping mechanism. You know what I mean? <laughs> Everything in moderation. <laughs> so have the cake, just not every two minutes. You can have your cake and you can eat, eat it. it. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think another thing we can do. I mean, we've been inundated with information, and everybody's an expert yes. in this space. Yes. Um, and yes. Just being very um, strategic in terms of what you consume and limiting the amount of you know information that you take in, if you can be. Um, mindful around um sort of maybe the times maybe you you look at the news in the morning and look at the news at night and you know you don't spend the whole day scrolling through you know twitter or whatever yeah. news feeds that you get um you know there are different mindfulness activities that you can take and even something as simple as just breathing that you know we all have access to that um and so that's you, know, you can just take a minute and just breathe i know there have been a couple of apps yeah. that we even use so there's some breathing exercises that you can get through um sort of not advertising iPhone, but obviously, you know, there's breathing exercises for your Apple yeah. Watch, for example. But there are lots of apps that are out there that will help talk you through breathing exercises and just focusing or refocusing your energy. Um, and that's just outside of COVID. You know, yeah. this, this has been, yes, a tipping point. But I think, you know, from this, um, one one ray of hope is that maybe that may well be something that we reflect on a little, a little bit higher, maybe break down those barriers and stigma that, that we've discussed already. I, I tell you one of the things that affect me a lot is... Um, because just like yourself, I, I'm still working and it become very intense a lot uh, as a child care lawyer advocate. And um, as I say, I'm now a, a key worker, but it's, I it was like in a court hearing yesterday and today and everything is now remote, remote. And then sometimes I get these messages come through from WhatsApp or whatever. And I got, I got a, a batch of them in a, in a go like death news, death news. And, and I, I said to a friend, why are people telling me about death? Why are they announcing death news to me? Don't get me wrong. I understand we've got a pandemic going on, but but sometimes it does have that effect that I have to I have to respond to the person and say, "Can you can you stop? Can you take me off your broadcast list?" You know, <laughs> I, I just have to start saying that now. You know, in a polite way, and if it continues, because I realize my coping mechanism is just shutting things off. I don't I don't need to be. Um, inundated with news, I can source the news. Right. You know. You know. And and as Carla said earlier, you know, pre preserve your mind, protect your mind as much as possible. So that, that's a, my my mechanism is is just shutting things out, some yeah, very brutally. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's very personal to everyone, and if that's what you yeah. need to do to um, cope, then that's that's well, that's what you need to do because yeah. that can become quite overwhelming, especially when we're inundated with you know stats around you know this many deaths and it, it, it's not necessarily put into context and we're not looking at um sort of you know we wouldn't ordinarily report on death to this extent for this period of time yes. um and deaths have been going on yeah. all the time um so it can become quite overwhelming so if you do need to sort of unplug and disengage for a little bit if that's the coping strategy that you need then you know, give yourself, be flexible, be kind to yourself. Somebody just said, um, comfort food, my cake. <laughs> <laughs> and beloved, you're not getting any. Even the <laughs> <laughs> I think she wants a slice. Whoever that was. Slice, slice. Right? Yeah. 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 Well, listen, guys, I, I know you got another appointment. I don't want to keep you. Is there any last word you guys want to say before you go? Um, in terms of mental health, one big problem. I did mention this, sleeping is so important. I don't know if, you know, I can, I can speak for myself. Um, yeah. Sleeping is is such a vital thing to just um, you know, deal with, you know, anything that you're, uh, you, this stressful time. So getting a good night's rest, that's something very simple that you can do. And then there are resources um, available for people who may need additional supports. Um, yeah. 
just a quick plug for the NHS Thrive, which is an online mental health service. So if you do feel that you need something more in addition to what you can do for yourself, um, that's a good place. It's a free online resource available for all of us now. Um, and then, you know, if it's even, you know, more there, you know, you can always try and access um, yeah. professional services. Right, Samaritans, Good Samaritans are obviously yeah. free, free, free access, uh, free, free access sorry, to, to, to people at any given time. So if you need help, the help is out there. Right. Um, and yeah, just keep trying, keep positive through all the, through all this. This is a long haul. We know it's a long haul. Mm. And so this is why these sort of things do matter because they will creep in at some point in time and show in terms of people uh, general well-being but also uh, mental well-being um and uh, i'm sure i'm sure you know talking about that helps to break, break down those barriers as well and the stigma that we talked about earlier so just keep positive throughout this as best you can get outside get it exercising exercising don't stay indoors I'm, I'm, la D. I'm laughing because uh zan below says my husband will be glad to hear that about sleeping i guess <laughs> <laughs> So you guys got a fan call there. <laughs> Essex all day. Yeah, don't do get the rest that your body richly deserves. Yeah, and gardening is also therapeutic, you know. Yes. And of course, my friend and I have started an exercise class on Zoom, so I'm finding that a very helpful pastime. Plus, Perfect. In encourage each other. That's it. That's the key. Yes. You know, in, you know, as soon as you see somebody exercise, you think, oh, actually, I'll, I'll exercise as well, and that will spread the yes. the wealth. And it's not we're not talking about big. You know, runs for you know miles here. We're just talking about getting the heart rate up a little bit, and um, that can be as, as as exhausting as being in the garden to, yes. to to sort of going on a little run around the neighborhood. Or um, you can just you can just dance while you're doing the gardening. Yeah, yeah exactly. Awesome. Or you can stand up like you just did a second ago. <laughs> <laughs> All right, All right. Well, listen, guys. Well, well, thank you so much. Oh, one more thing. Um, uh, the Matt Hancock or well, Boris actually said next week they're going to have. The the, the 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 lockdown yeah. process to yeah. unlock the lockdown. <laughs> Many people started to think, oh, we're gonna lock, we're gonna be unlocking next week, but yeah. it is actually the process, isn't it? That's what they're it's, a, it's a discussion, I, and I, I, and I think that's as that's as that's as much as we can really glean from it. You can speculate all you want, but yeah. um, I, I I can't see a I I personally can't see a lockdown being lifted next week. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, you know, we, I may be wrong, but I think it's more detailing a plan because that's what people have been asking for for the past few weeks. Yes. Um, and now that he's re, uh, regained his position from, uh, you know, from obviously having his his ill health, um, I think he'll want to take and command that position um, of, of of giving us more uh, insight as to where things will, will go ultimately. But yeah, I, I can't see us unlocking and going back to normal next week, um, but watch this space. Unlock lockdown, guys. Thank you so much. No problem. And uh, you can carry on for your next um, next meeting, <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, um, want to thank um, Dr. Carla Burton, um, an epidemiologist, and also Mr. David Burton, GMC registered consultant, ophthalmic surgeon. I can never say that ophthalmic. Yes. Yeah, let me say. It. I'm, I'm going to those, I was just thinking that you're an epidemiologist. Ophthalmologist. <laughs> Ophthalmologist. <laughs> Ophthalmologist. Yeah, 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 yeah. There, you know. So, um, you know, and, and, and they have been sharing their um, their natural gift for us for the past three weeks as well, and and it's been really helpful. A lot of people have been saying they have benefits from that, David. And um, they're also the host of the co host of the of the couch. And when you're on the couch, and you watch that, you will see a different side of Dr. Carla Burton. <laughs> <laughs> where, she lets it, where she let it rips, you know. But, um, you know and and I've, I'm now, as I said, a certified fan. Thank of you. Mr. Thank you very much. We appreciate, <laughs> we appreciate that. We'll see you again, the show. <laughs> okay, guys. So thank you very much, guys. Thanks. Thanks. Take care. Have a good night. And you thank thanks. You. Cheers. <laughs> Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, um, thank you so much for, for coming on. And those on Instagram, hope you were able to hear everything. And of course, you can um, check it out on the YouTube after the updates on upload on YouTube. And for those on the sideline uh, with your comments, um, that's very good. I think we just touch, touch a bit more on some of the coping mechanism for mental health. 
Um, I saw one one person message me to say what they do. They they shut out people as well. Um, what what is it? My coping mechanism is to shut things out. That's what one somebody said message to me. Um, um, Zion loves the comfort food. My friends have started exercise. Gonna go out and say gardening is also very therapeutic. Um, one of course my friends start to exercise. Um, and thank you, but very helpful, very interesting topic. We appreciate you and your guests. Thank you so much for that. And as well, I just wanted to, to just finalize uh, this bit of the program with some key points, some summary of, of today, where Health Secretary Matt Hancock says there's been an unprecedented rise in coronavirus testing in the UK. And he says the target of 100,000 daily tests has been met. Of course, that is questioned as to how the figures arise in the first place. Uh, Labour is saying that it is misleading. Uh, just like our persons say, the employment figure is misleading. Um, Sometimes um, zero, zero contract and how they fix it. Is it a fix? Uh, another thing is that millions of children, I, I didn't say this out, millions of children risk miss, missing out on vital vaccines as shipments are delayed because of the pandemic impact on aviation, the UN warns. May Day rallies take place globally in support of workers' rights, but in scale back or social distance form. More than one million people known to have had the virus globally have recovered. Now, this is very interesting because normally we don't hear that. It says more than one million, 14,000 people known to have had the virus globally have recovered, John Hopkins University says. I've known persons who have had COVID-19 um, COVID and they have recovered. I believe I had covid um, about five, six weeks ago, and I've recovered. Um, but of course, you were in tests, you don't know. Now that I'm a key worker, which I find out, maybe I should have tested it. It remains unclear how many people were not tested have also made a recovery. And the last one, which I'll leave with, is um, Donald Trump says he has seen evidence the virus originated in a lab in, a lab in Wuhan without giving details. U.S. intelligence agents conclude the virus was not man-made or genetically modified. I don't know. Do you know? That's a mystery. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Silbert, and I'm out. I want to thank you for a wonderful evening. Um, enjoy the weekend, and of course, follow through with my various shows, as there will be much more coming on Business and Lifestyle, and the late one. Looking forward to getting Mr. Chris Tufton, the Minister of Health in Jamaica, to follow up on what's happening in Jamaica, and also maybe even Mr. Head Bartlett. Um, who is the Minister for Tourism. I'm keeping a spotlight in Jamaica because I'm Jamaican, of course, not being biased or anything. Um, and, and, and also, you know, the I Commission, which I had last night, uh, make sure you check out that video where he explained a lot of things and also ways how people can try to get back to Jamaica if they have been um, you know, quarantined in the UK and always shut down. There are different things that they're working on as well. So. Thank you very much, and like and subscribe to my show on YouTube, Silver TV, and have a good night. And ladies and gentlemen who have been watching, thank you very much as well. Bye-bye. Thanks. Instagram, thank you very much.